Right, now we're going to explore um, trigonometric limits. We really have kind of avoided uh, trigonometry somewhat, so now it's time to look at limits um, merged with that. So um, let's take a look at uh, these first few examples right here. Um, notice that the limit of tangent x as x approaches 0. So again, let's always try direct substitution uh, in here. thought I'd mix up the colors on you. Okay, uh, evaluating tangent at zero, well, uh, we just have to remember from the unit circle what that is. And so if you need to, uh, in your textbook, there is a uh, representation of the unit circle, I believe, behind the front cover. Uh, but the tangent at zero being the y over the x, the y coordinate over the x coordinate, uh, results in zero. Zero. So that would be something that you'd have to know without a calculator. For sure. Let's come over here and let's go ahead and try and see if direct substitution works. Everywhere we see x, plug in a pi. So pi times the cosine at pi. Okay, well, pi times the cosine at pi. Well, cosine at pi on the unit circle, quick memory, pi is over here, and the x coordinate being cosine is negative 1. So that's going to result in our answer of negative pi. So these limits are working just fine with direct substitution. Okay, here, evaluate at zero. So we have sine sine squared zero. Okay, Ooh, that's kind of sloppy. Um, thinking about this right now, what this means in print form right here, the square is on the trig function. So let's go ahead and uh, rewrite this knowing what the equivalent form is. Um, sine squared zero is quantity sine zero squared. Again, the square is not on the angle or the argument, if you will. Okay, so we have to find out what the sine of zero is and square that answer. Well, the y coordinate at zero radians and positive x-axis would be your standard position here and zero radians would fall there, but the y coordinate is zero. So zero squared is just zero. So all of these limits work nicely. Um, so again, I suggest that when you're um, expected to find the limit of a trig function or something that involves a trig function, that just try and direct substitution and, and hopefully everything will go well there. All right, uh, let's take a look at two special trigonometric limits for us in calculus. Let's find the limits graphically. Well, first of all, let's investigate why we can't find them by direct substitution or the analytical method. So let's first of all evaluate at zero just by direct substitution. So the sine of 0 over 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0, denominator is 0. That's indeterminate. That's likely why, likely why we're going to have to investigate um, the limit graphically. Uh, because right here, right now, thinking about we, what we've done recently, um, there's not really anything algebraic that we can do. Um, I don't see any factoring, conjugates, um, you know, getting rid of complex fractions, anything like that. So let's investigate the limit of this function uh, as x approaches 0 graphically. So take the time to go ahead and, and make certain that when you type this into y1, you are getting this type of graph. Okay? And it appears that as a rough sketch, but, but what's happening is this graph is going above and below, above and below the x-axis repeatedly. Now, looking back at the equation right here, notice that when x is 0, um, this is the indeterminate form uh, that that would indicate at x equals zero. You do have that point discontinuity. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is on your calculator, you're going to want to trace along uh, the graph and just kind of look and see what the y values are doing closer and closer um, to where x is um, equal to zero. And um, hopefully from this, uh, we see that this limit is equal to one. So graphically, uh, we can say that that limit's equal to 1. And we have what we, we call a squeeze theorem that's in our textbook um, uh, to be discussed later, but um, know that that helps us, the squeeze theorem, or sometimes called the sandwich theorem, helps us to uh, see that uh, uh, this limit is equal to 1. We've just investigated the behavior uh, using a graphing calculator, but to do a more formal proof of the answer to this limit question, uh, it would require the sandwich or the squeeze theorem. But at this point, I would just say this would probably be one thing that would be helpful for you to memorize is this limit right here. As x approaches 0 okay, on this function, okay, the y values are going into 1 even though we have a point discontinuity. Okay? 
All right, and then this one as well, I go ahead and type into your calculator. I'm observing the, the graph and then finding the, the limit analytically. And again, the reason I'm jumping right into the graphical approach is because if you were to evaluate uh, at zero, we're going to get one minus cosine of zero, uh, which is one, which the numerator results in zero. Zero divided by zero is, again, indeterminate. So it requires you know, some other techniques for finding the answer, etc. cetera, and we're just going to use the graphical approach. So it looks like this graph. Okay, what about in your calculator? And, and I did a Zoom 7 window, by the way, on both of these. I did a, a trig window, uh, Zoom 7. Uh, it appears that the graph is coming in. It hits the x-axis. Okay, it falls down a little bit here. Okay, and then it comes back up through the origin. Okay, and it, it looks like it's symmetric with the origin. Okay, it's that origin symmetry, and it looks like it kind of flattens out here and kind of goes up this way. But just so you guys know if you've graphed it correctly or not, uh, I'm just trying to give you kind of a rough sketch of that graph. Okay. Again, at x equals 0, we have a point discontinuity because we have 0 over 0. So what are the y values going into? It appears that um, this limit is going to equal 0. And this would be one that you would want to think about memorizing to uh, this limit right here, both of these as well. Okay both these limits. I would try and commit to memory because you're going to need them. All right. Okay, I want you to notice in this next section that there are, what, nine problems? No, 12 problems. Okay. So, and the thinking here is this, is that um, go ahead and investigate the behavior graphically meaning take the time on y1, y2, wherever, type this into the function, and um, just you know, discover what the limits are. Okay, so this might be a good time to kind of pause the video, take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 minutes, whatever, and um, actually one at a time, you know, plug these into your calculator and see if you can find the limits as x approaches the indicated c value, which to me it looks like all the c values um, are 0. I think at some point, maybe when you're four or five problems in, you're going to go, oh, I see the pattern. I see the structure. I'm going to make use of that structure, meaning I see the pattern. I think I know what these other answers are going to be. Okay, so take a few minutes and just uh, find those limit answers, too. And uh, you might want to pause the video because what I'm going to do is uh, just display all the answers then. Okay, take a moment and check your work, see how you did. So hopefully at this point you've kind of seen the pattern and you kind of know what's going on here. Um, notice that when you do plug in 0 here and here, you're dividing by 0. The numerator is also 0. That's indeterminate. So the first thing you want to do is always try and plug in the 0 because you never know what's going to happen. And in this case, we do get indeterminate, but by using the graphing calculator, we see that the limit is 1. Well, notice the coefficients okay, on the variable argument and the variable denominator. 3 and 3? Hmm. All right, notice over here, okay, it is indeterminate to begin with when we first check. Okay, but then when you find the answer graphically, think about 5 and 5. Okay, over here, our answer is 5 thirds, or 1.6 repeating. I'm seeing a pattern. Okay, then all of a sudden, 4, okay, it changes. Okay, why is 4 not the ratio of the coefficients okay, of the variable parts of this problem? Well, because I'm never dividing by 0. If that's what you guess, good job. I'm never dividing by 0 down here, so in the numerator I have 0, and the denominator I have 3, well, 0 divided by 3 is just 0. Back to the same problem that I had here. Look at 6. Back to what looks like number 4. I'm not dividing by a 0. Okay, look at 7. I think you get the pattern. 8. And then 9, I change it on you. And notice that I put a trig function in the numerator and the denominator, but the um, pattern still holds uh, in this case right here. Okay. So when I get 0 over 0, the pattern still holds whether I have um, sign in the numerator okay, or uh, both the numerator and denominator. So 5 thirds the coefficients, the ratio. Okay, now notice that with tangent, the pattern seems to be the same as if it was a sine function. And that's true. 
Okay, for tangent, and we could work it all out and, and see that this, you know, uh, does hold true. And that's because I could change tangent to sine over cosine, meaning I could change tangent of 5x to sine 5x over cosine 5x and do a little bit of algebra, try a direct sub in, uh, and the pattern results in the, in the same as sine. Okay, now at this point right here, let me see how much time, time there is. Okay. I wanted to kind of show, kind of go down here. I kind of want to show why why don't I have cosine and does the pattern work for cosine? Uh, well, let's just take a look at that. Okay, did I just purposely leave off cosine, or are you thinking that cosine is going to work the same? Well, let's just kind of give a close example using cosine. So, uh, let's say it's cosine five x over three x. Based on the pattern I saw previous with sine and tangent, why wouldn't this be 5 thirds? Well, here's why. Remember what we want to do first. We always want to try direct substitution. So this results in cosine of 5 times 0 over 3 times 0. Okay, and in this case, let's look at the numerator because in the denominator we know that's 0. In the numerator, this is the cosine at 0. Well, what's the x-coordinate at 0 radians? Well, it's 1. Well, that's not indeterminate. That right there is does not exist. The only thing I don't know, is, as we've talked about previously, is because this is a vertical asymptote on the graph of this function, I don't know if it's positive infinity or negative infinity. And in this case, um, we would have to just um, investigate x values close to 0 on either side of 0 uh, and plug those in and, um, and, and see what results as far as do we have both the positive and negative infinity um, or just the positive or the negative. But at this point, let me tell you, that's a lot of work for this problem. It's enough on this one to just say, oh, that's undefined. My limit does not exist. And just leave it at that and don't worry on these trig ones if it's a positive or a negative infinity. Okay, so I guess to answer kind of that question, does, does the rule, the structure hold true for cosine? No, it doesn't. It does just for sine. And tangent. Okay. So hopefully, again, like I said, to wrap up and to summarize here, okay, you might want to just kind of think about memorizing okay, this limit uh, and then this one too, uh, but more so probably this one as well. But always try with limits to try the direct substitution and then you can go from there if need be if you get an indeterminate situation. Okay. All right. See you soon.